Uh, I'm very happy to, to give this talk. I know you must be tired because it's the last one, but I hope you will enjoy. Um, I realize preparing the slide with uh, all the colleagues that our, our title is not very nice and we have to change it. So we have a new title, which is much longer. And I will try to explain what do we mean and what uh, we, we, we would like to do in this project. This project started in January officially and we are still in the in the starting of, of the project so I will just uh, introduce the idea that we have the things we want to do and some progress we we just have uh, our motivation is about music I mean there is a lot of information about music around the, around the web for instance only in Spotify or on in other uh, online platforms you find billions of songs and uh, they are usually commercial recordings so they have been recorded in the studio or maybe mastered later so they are good quality good uh, nice recording but in addition to that you you find a lot of user generated uh, uh, videos or recordings that one has taken uh, with her mobile or with a camera uh, and they are of different quality and different characteristics in addition, music is not only recordings or audio or video, but we also find uh, textual description about music. We find images, for instance, uh, album covers, which represent a little bit the music and the style. And we also find a musical score, which is a symbolic representation of the music, which is also used by musicians and uh, by composers to create and uh, interpret music. So our motivation is to deal with this large collection of, uh, of music material. In particular, I will put an example of one of our projects, which is uh, an European project that, uh, that finished uh, this year, where we have uh, a deal with uh, symphonic music. They are, uh, as you may know, symphonic pieces are very long, one hour duration, and they are usually recording from different perspectives. In this, uh, you can see this figure here where you find, for instance, in this case, the, in this recording of the Symphony Number no. 3 of Beethoven, we had like 17 audio tracks, we had also uh, six or uh, seven or eight uh, video cameras from different uh, perspectives. We have Kinect recording also, we had uh, uh, scores, we have also some descriptors we automatically compute from audio or from, uh, from video, so we have a huge amount of uh, information. In this case, it was uh, 15 gigabytes, but depending on the quality you have, you can have uh, up to one terabyte of uh, information for one piece uh, performed one uh, in a particular concert. So uh, we created a multimodal uh, database to store all this information and to try to access and visualize it and have some meaningful description of, uh, of this information. In particular, we have been working in our, in our department on methods that try to describe uh, separately the, the, the audio part, like the auditory uh, information that we can get from music, and in another way, the visual part of uh, information. In particular, myself, I've been working on trying to analyze music material, mostly scores or uh, music or audio signals. And uh, my colleague Gloria Aro, who is uh, seated there, she has been working on extracting information from images and uh, from video uh, recordings. So um, then we did try to join forces in this project too, because uh, we as humans, we do not use only our ears, only our eyes, but we just perceive music when, especially when uh, looking at videos, we, pre uh, we perceive it in a complementary or in a combined auditory and visual domain. So this is what we wanted to explore in our, in our project. So our team is uh, composed of uh, now uh, four people, mostly myself, uh, or the, 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 the newest one is Olga Slithovskaya, she's seated there and she's the one that, uh, that uh, her PhD work on, the, on this project and then Gloria and myself we are trying to, uh, to contribute with, with our algorithms and expertise, for instance the algorithms that Gloria has co-developed also in the image processing group of optical flow estimation uh, and uh, I am trying to contribute with the uh, uh, the scriptures I have uh, developed for or co-developed for uh, extracting melody, spectral content and harmony from music signals. 
And uh, we have also one uh, poster, which is Julian Urbano, who is specialized in evaluation and uh, evaluation of information retrieval methods to check because we found out that uh, it's needed to, to find which databases should we use, uh, how to measure the reliability of those data sets, if they are representing real world problems or not. And we are also having some advice from uh, external people from here, from the department. So now I will explain you the title of a project, which is very long. So first we want to work with uh, uh, music, but in particular we decided to focus on a very challenging material, which are user-generated music performance video. And I will illustrate it with an example. I don't know if uh, who here has a child or a, or a friend or a couple that play music. And in this time of the year, you have all these final concerts, you know, like the choir. And then people go to those final concerts and record their videos a uh, similar way to this. Uh, sorry. And, uh, and then you see this is your child, but you don't want to just focus on, on others when you want to focus on your child. And then I will, I will play this. So then people try to record, but then they are nervous because it's the child, they are so excited, they, they try to they move the camera and then they talk and they say, wow, it's so wonderful. And then there is also the grandmother and their aunt which are filming together. And if there is an orchestra, there is the whole parents filming and then they have a WhatsApp group, they share all the videos and then you have like 10 or 11 videos of the same performance. So this is the material we are dealing with. Then we want to develop things which are content-based. So of course you can tag, uh, you can say it's a cello. It's, uh, it's uh, the, the piece is a Suzuki book number, I don't know which one, and you can tag it, but you don't tag it in a very, very exact way. You always tag global tags. You don't know if this video is very long, when uh, is your child playing and, and where in the scene is your child. So we want to uh, there you, uh, get some information about the content, the video itself. And of course, we use this as uh, an illustration of different, different aspects of music perception. We also use the context information that we can obtain, for instance, from YouTube uh, tags and so on. Uh, we, what do we mean by semantic descriptors? Of course, we don't want to provide descriptors which are very low level, like for instance, this is spectral uh, centroid of uh, this frequency range or the optical flow gloss from here from here, but we want to have textual descriptors which are richer than text, so we want to work on uh, semantically meaningful descriptors and address the so-called semantic gap. And finally, we want to rely on methods that allow trustworthy uh, content-based uh, semantic de description because we realize we cannot trust our performance estimates, for instance, precision recall F measure, uh, if we don't know if our data set is reliable, if we don't know if our data set is, uh, is good enough and representative of the problem. So we want to investigate also how to build better data sets, more representative, and if uh, maybe not uh, a lot of data is needed, but we need uh, data which is well sampled and well distributed over our problem. So these are our, uh, this is our goal and we want to go beyond the state of the art. For instance, state of the art in music, uh, information retrieval mostly focus on either the audio file or the, or the image uh, of the album. And we want to work on the, uh, combining those. State of the art only works on studio recording with professional uh, performance, very good uh, very good quality material. We want to, uh, to work with this uh, user-generated videos. We would like also to address the, the current limitation of systems which work with low level and then classifiers and to try to understand what are the limitations and the, and the challenges of these classification methods. And uh, we want to build data sets which are multimodal, not only in single modality. And finally, we want to go from validity, reliability and efficiency to understanding data set reliability while you are building a data set and after you have built a data set. So this is the things we want to do in this project. And uh, then I will just illustrate with some of the, the first tasks we address which uh, because we 
Of course, there are many problems uh, related to this scenario. For instance, quality assessment, how can we measure quality in the visual domain, in the audio domain, but also musical quality or of the performance? How can we synchronize different videos of the same performance? How can we, for instance, uh, uh, segment long videos and uh, uh, provide meaningful descriptions of one hour videos or two hours videos? And finally, how to build mashups by combining videos which have better quality uh, among the different uh, sets of a mix. But for the moment, we, we, we have been working on music instrument uh, recognition. Of course, this is a very well-known task in the literature. There's a Mirex competition running for four years only in audio. So we wanted to address this task and uh, uh, how does it uh, perform in, the, in, the, in this particular material because some people may say you can recognize an instrument in an audio signal uh, very, very, uh, with a very good accuracy if this instrument is playing alone, no? it's what we call monophonic. So it's like uh, people think it's uh, a well-known problem and more or less solved in the literature. So uh, this is an example. This, uh, can someone identify the instrument here? It's a bass, but some people say maybe it's a cello. I don't know. I mean, this depending on the size, no? And sometimes also depending on the bow, but here you don't see a bow. And, uh, and uh, also if, if, if the instrument is, uh, is, uh, is in this position, people might think it's a guitar because uh, all the guitars are played like that. <laughs> and uh, of course, in this video, we don't, uh, we don't uh, have any tagging of this instrument, but of this other instrument. Okay, so this is what we want to identify. We want to identify it's playing a violin, then there is a, a bass which is not played, and then when the instrument starts to play and where in the scene. So, uh, of course, there are many data sets for that, but all of them are in the audio domain or in the image uh, domain. For instance, we selected uh, a set from the ImageNet uh, data set which have two different instruments and uh, and this number of images, and you have here uh, an illustration of the kind of images we have. And then we, we got data sets for audio that are well known in the literature where you have samples of instruments labeled, and you see the heterogeneity of number of classes and number of instances per classes. This is something that would be nice to, to take from publications, because you always have to build this table of uh, how many classes, how many instruments, and then which are the features. And then it's very difficult to compare the results because they are all running in different uh, material. So the first thing we didn't find was uh, a video data set, so we have to use a YouTube API to crawl uh, videos or uh, user-generated videos. Uh, and also this was our first contribution to in this, in this project. Of course, uh, uh, videos are uh, tagged, but they are not uh, tagged in terms of, uh, they are uh, with uh, global tags, like this is an instrument, but you don't have information where the instrument is playing or uh, or when, uh, and then we try to, to develop an online uh, tool also based on the experience uh, of the department on building annotation tools which are collaborative, and then we try to, for instance, uh, connect with the YouTube or you can upload your video and then you can annotate, for instance, the region and uh, where the instrument is playing, and then we integrate uh, algorithms for optical flow uh, tracking and uh, to track this object in the scene. And then we will integrate or uh, also algorithms for audio processing to detect when the instrument is playing or not. You may see there, here, there, uh, two instruments and then uh, we can focus on one of them or we can focus on, on both. So this is the kind of annotations we are now collecting. So uh, in addition to that, we, we try to, to train our models on, on only images and or on only audio and then apply them to, to video uh, recordings and we, are, we were very unsuccessful uh, for the moment. If you train of course with images and you, and you evaluate or test with images, you have a very good accuracy. We could even improve state-of-the-art methods. If you train with audio material and then you evaluate with audio material, of course you have a very good accuracy measure, you have even uh, even a very uh, good accuracy in, uh, in different data sets, cross-validation and everything. But of course, if you 
apply on this material. This is an illustration of uh, four different videos and on the top left you have the estimation of the image uh, recognition engine and on the bottom right you have the audio. So you see there is a lot of errors uh, of, and confusions between instruments because of course this material you haven't used uh, for training. And then we might think, okay, so let's use it for training. So let's build more data, more data and to build it. So this is one option, but another one is to, to understand how much data uh, should we need and if uh, not the, the highest number is the biggest uh, accuracy, of course. So we then research uh, also in the same uh, way on reliability of data sets. Of course, uh, uh, there are methods or statistical methods that try to model and simulate data sets. That allows you to, to check if, for instance, if you reduce your data set, how representative are the performance measures you get. Or if you, for instance, sample it, how do you want to sample? And you can have some statistical measure, but also some uh, measures related to the content. If you have only piano music, or if you have only uh, a particular player, of course, you will have overfitting over your model. So we try to develop an R pa package to try to measure the, estimate the reliability of data sets. It is mainly the work by Julian Urbano. And we have already this uh, package where we try to apply this to existing data sets in the music information retrieval uh, area and also in our own research. Of course, uh, there are many people also doing uh, similar work to us, and in, in this uh, Maria de Maestro, there is also uh, the opportunity to collaborate with other people. For instance, uh, with the uh, Duff University of Technology, we have been collaborating in the Phoenix project because they have a, a system that try to identify the faces and then try to identify if someone is playing or not playing because it shows up it was easier to, to just look at the face of the, of the player and not at the instrument. <laughs> so because there are occlusion, there are uh, a lot of challenges. So we are trying to collaborate with them in order to, to have complementary approaches and also tools for video annotation and integrate some of the things they have. We also have some collaboration with uh, other researchers that do specific work on a specific instrument. This is an example of Candombe, which is a, a percussion uh, band, and they try to uh, to detect when each uh, um, uh, instrument is playing and they have a specific database we are using for training also our models. And then we are trying also to collaborate with people from NYU and Spotify in build more meaningful music information retrieval evaluation methods. This is more or less ongoing work of course uh, uh, we are, have started with instrument identification because we want also to to, to um, contribute to the initiative, evaluation initiative in, uh, in the Izmir area. And of course, we would like to address other tasks which are uh, exploiting more the temporal aspects of, uh, of uh, videos, which are not at the moment very, uh, very, very complex. Our approach is not very complex to work also on synchronization. And we would like also to provide textual descriptions, maybe using you know, some natural language uh, uh, synthesis or uh, textual synthesis for, uh, for having our, our descriptors in a user-friendly uh, way. And this is mostly everything I wanted to, to, to mention. I think it took uh, yeah, tw 20 minutes, so if you have any question or comment. Thank you. Hello, thank you for the talk. I have two questions, and the first question is related to, like, if you have like uh, the cocktail boys party, it's like which I think is similar to identifying different instruments mm -hmm. in a scene. Mm -hmm. Can you like accurately identify different instruments? Yeah, it, as I said, there are state-of-the-art models we have done, for instance, that can have uh, training. You're training isolated instruments, and then you can recognize in mixtures at least the most predominant instrument, mm -hmm. for instance. Uh, in, the, in the image uh, processing, I, I know there's also object segmentation. Uh, I'm not, it's not my area, but that area. But uh, there is no single approach which combine both things in, a, in, a, uh, in the same uh, kind of algorithm. Of course, uh, it depends on the data you have. If you have a very clear, you have a, a very clear recording, and you know more or less the style, people can at least predict which instruments you will have. 
and it's much easier if you use contextual information to have something like this. So it depends, but there's some approaches, yeah. Um, all, always they are based on, on training, so it's like also biased, biased to, the, to the data you have for training. Okay, is it a supervised learning? Yes. And the ground truth, it's like, is it provided? Or? There are several data sets, the one I mentioned, and for instance, at the uh, music technology group, we publish one on polyphonic. So they are soloist instruments, and then you can uh, you can have ground truth from instruments. There is another from uh, from the, which is called RWC, which also have uh, even the notes, the transcription of the score. And so. My second question is yes. uh, regarding the the semantics. Can you identify different type of players? It's like, can you say? Like players of, of this instrument have a similar style of playing? Yeah, that's the ultimate goal to compare quality and compare similarity on the way they, they, they perform. And not only auditory, but also on the way they behave in, a, okay. in the a scenario or in the visual scene. It but yes, we have some methods for uh, comparing performances. For instance, you can compare the tempo, you can compare the dynamics of the piece, you can compare articulation, several. There is uh, many methods in the literature or different approaches for building comparison between performances. Thank you. Thank you, Emilia, for the talk. Um, I wonder if um, the extra information that comes in YouTube, like commentaries or um, maybe the title of the piece that is being played, all this, are you going to exploit it? Or yes, we, we wish, it? but for the moment we only get the instrument tag from the, from the title and uh, to build our first data set. And then, of course, for training, we would like to have more control data set because it's very noisy uh, sometimes this uh, information you have on YouTube. And of course, these are may maybe very long videos and you want to train with, uh, with the parts that are really containing the video or the instrument, because sometimes you have different instruments. Or, but yes, we use it for a first data, data set generation. Any other question? Well, I guess uh, thank you again. Thank you.